what is up everybody Nintendo biggest fan here welcoming you back to more let's play Pokemon Fire Red version in the last episode we had just caught a Pidgey and a Rattata and finally had more than just one Pokemon we haven't used either of them yet but first since we had to harm them to make it easy to catch them their health is low so we're gonna take them all to a Pokemon Center and heal them up I would like you to kill my Pokemon. No, I'm just joking. I just came here to chat. What do you want to talk about? We should talk about Pokemon. That's there. That's a pretty cool thing. Oh god. Let's just go on over to the left. There's something we're not gonna need to go visit till much, much later in the game. This is some old guy who just had his coffee, so now he's not lying on the ground anymore, which I forgot to show, which sucks. I don't know, maybe I'll insert a clip of it or something. What is that red box I have? I am working on my Pokedex. Then let me give you a word of advice! Whenever you catch a Pokemon, the Pokedex automatically updates its data! You don't know how to catch a Pokemon? Actually, I do. No, you, you don't have to show me. No, oh, dang it. No, this is actually pretty funny, because you get to watch an old man have a Pokemon battle. Anyway, here we go. He's taking forever. This is an old man. He's slow. He's got to figure things out one inch at a time. Look at those age spots and wrinkles on his face. Nah, but um... Oh, this episode is off to a great start, wouldn't you say? No, I wouldn't. I think I'm gonna stop using my old man voice for him, because that's my Gary Oak voice, and without it just being the... Not Gary Oak, Professor. Without it just being that, it's, there's nothing unique about him. So he's just an old guy, and... He gave us what's called a TTTV, which is a very stupid name. There's a gym here. Now, there's eight gyms in the game. You get all eight badges, and we go to what's called... Well, you'll see later. But this gym, as this old man will tell us, is always closed. Because the leader's not here. He'll come back for me. Anyway, the TTTV, you can look at some stuff for help, but it's really not useful at all. Now you might have noticed one of these trees back in Viridian City, but we can't do anything about them yet. So, I'm just gonna ignore them. Although, if you go up to them, it'll say it looks like this tree can be cut. Which means you're gonna have to get a move called Cut. Ooh, random Pokemon. Eh, nothing new, just a Pidgey. Yeah, 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 go away, Pidgey. Actually, let's, let's, let's defeat this Pidgey. And level our Charmander up, because I believe at level 7, it was a very useful move. Charmander! This is great commentary, I would say. So let's, uh, scratch this birdie. Birdie needs to die. Die! Thought you want experience points. Go to level 7 and learns Ember! Yay! Ember's our first move that isn't normal type. Well, real quick, I'm gonna actually run him back to the Pokemon Center and heal him because that took quite a bit out of him and we're not gonna come across another one for a while. But yeah, uh, Ember is a fire type move. Now, while Pokemon themselves are certain types, and certain types are either averagely effective, super effective, not very effective, or completely ineffective against other types, the actual type of the Pokemon is not a factor in that. It's the type of the move you use. For example, if I use fire on, say, a steel-type Pokemon, it'll be super effective and do more damage than usual. Um... However, the, if I were to use Scratch, which is normal type, it wouldn't be like, uh, I wouldn't have any, it wouldn't be super effective against Steel. By the way, Fire is super effective against Steel, but that was explanatory with what I was saying. 
But anyway, it wouldn't be super effective because I, there may be a fire type, but it's not a fire move. So yeah. Now, what type you are is what determines how effective other moves are effective against you. For example, since Charmander's fire, water's effective against fire, a water move will be super effective against me. Let's talk to these people. Raditz, it may be small, but don't underestimate its wicked bite. Have you caught one already? Yes, I have. What do you have to say? Are you going to Meridian Forest? It's a natural maze in there. Be careful you don't get lost. Oh yeah, we're going to Viridian Forest. And it is a natural maze in here. There's a lot of trainer battles to happen in here, so that's pretty neato. Uh, we're gonna just, and this is actually, we're gonna find a lot more new Pokemon here. What do you have to say? I came here with some friends to catch us some bug Pokemon. They're all itching to get into some Pokemon battles. As a matter of fact, so am I. So let's go and catch a... Caterpie. Brand new Pokemon to us, and our first bug type. That's right, Caterpie is a bug type. There's another common bug Pokemon in here that's also poison type. Yeah, Pokemon can be two different types. What determines how effective a move is against it is their primary type. The secondary type really doesn't matter that much. Uh, I want to use Ember to weaken it a lot, but then again, Fire's effective against Bug, and I don't want to kill it. Meh, yeah, they're very common here. If I accidentally kill it, I'll just go get another. Yeah, it's dead. Charmander game 30 experience Pontes. By the way, uh... The f more your Pokemon levels up, the more experience it takes to get you to the next level. I, you know, I don't know if that was self-explanatory, but it's true. Because later in the- it depends on what the level of your opponent is, how much experience you gain from actually killing it. So, you know. Ah, String Shot, a status affecting move that lowers our speed. Speed is one of the stats in this game. What it is, is whoever's speed is the highest for each turn is who goes first. Unless you have a move that always goes first, or you either swap out your Pokemon or use an item. In which case, you're gonna go first anyway. Yeah, 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 use your string shots. Well, I can. Caterpie also knows Tackle, but isn't using it, so... Caterpie's ours. It's pretty neato. Now I'm gonna go walk around in some grass and look for the other common bug type here. Give a nickname to the catcher Caterpie. No. You might see these random trainers just standing around. What it is is if you walk in front of them close. Oh, here's the other one, Weedle. Uh, Weedle, there's poison sting, and be careful, because if your Pokemon's hit with a poison attack, it could be poisoned, in which, while it is poisoned, it'll lose health after every move. So, let's hope we don't get poisoned. Anyway. Uh, yeah, those random trainers, if you walk close enough in front of a random trainer like that, they often battle you. They give you a lot more experience, and they can also have multiple Pokemon, so be careful. Oh, there's the poison sting. Ooh, it didn't poison us. It's lucky. Alright, now I'm gonna go in for the Pokeball catch. Looks like its health should be in red there, but I guess it's not. Oh, whoops. Speed fail. Weedle. I like Weedle more than Caterpie. Weedle's better because it's got poison. Very useful. Weedle was caught. Oh, there is another Pokemon in this forest that's actually not rare but uncommon. And is my absolute favorite Pokemon. You who already know what it is, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, blah blah blah. I'm cliche. I don't care what you think. Eh, just another Weedle. 
So I was thinking it over, and I'm probably not gonna try and catch them all in this, just because, uh, that would be, well, I, I guess impossible, because, um, well, the issue is there's some Pokemon you can only get by trading in this game, so that wouldn't really be physically possible. Alright, well, it's reached ten minutes already, so this episode is actually over. Uh, so... Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time on Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red Version. Later!